Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements 11 video tutorial. And as I'm sure the title said, today we're going to be looking at creating a Polaroid from your pictures. How would we do that? Well, it's very easy to do and it makes a very, very nice effect on your pictures. So I wanted to show you how to do that right now. Let's first start with this picture. We're going to start here by doing a Command or a Control J because we want to duplicate that background layer. And now we're going to work on that background layer so it's non-destructive to the, to the actual picture itself. What we want to do here is all we have to do to create this effect is to add some canvas onto our actual photograph. So once again, go to Image, pull down Menu, Resize, and then Canvas Size. Now I have found that the canvas size works very, very well with a Polaroid by adding three inches to your picture. So it's not really actual inches, but it's going to add a nice, very nice border to it. So we're not making the picture extremely big, but it does make it look really, really nice. So we're going to take this 25 and we're going to run this to say 28. And now we have 16 down here. So we're going to take 16 and we're going to run that to 19. Make sure that your canvas extension color, because we're adding an extension to the canvas itself, is white. And then we can hit OK. And when we do that, you can see now it makes a very, very nice border around there. And that makes it look like the old Polaroids that we used to get from the Polaroid cameras. Now what we want to do though is add a little bit of text on this to make it even look more like a Polaroid. Remember at Polaroids <clears throat> some years ago where you would write on the bottom of the Polaroid? Well, let's go ahead and we're going to add some text to our Polaroid. Make sure this color is black or some color you can see on white. Put the cursor down here and now we're going to just uh, type here. Just type in here the girl with her javelin and click the little check tick there now we can move this just move it around maybe center it up a little bit and you get a tons of options you can do with this stuff i like to make the uh, text a little bigger we're going to move it back around just a little bit more right here and click the check box so there you have it so now you have a polaroid with a little bit of text on here it makes it look really really nice what you would do then, remember this is a PSD file, we would go to File, Save As, and you're going to have to change this format and save it as a JPEG. So you can have it printed and developed and, and done with what you want. Even if you're going to uh, post it to the website or to a, a Flickr site or somewhere, you're going to have to make sure that format is changed to JPEG and then hit Save and we can actually take that photo then and send it to wherever you want to send it to. So this happens to be a landscape shot. So will it work for a portrait shot? Well, let's look here. Here's a shot I took in portrait mode. The first thing you're going to have to remember, though, and I didn't show you this earlier. Let's fit this to screen. A lot of times your pictures will be no borders on the outside. If you hold your control key down on your keyboard and use your wheel mouse, you can actually move that up and down. If you have a wheel mouse, you can move that down. I suggest you give yourself some area here uh, move it down a little bit because you want to be able to see that border happening if we have it out here naturally we can't see the border so let's just scroll that wheel mouse down there a little bit and once again we're going to do the same thing we go to image well first we're going to duplicate the background layer doing command or control j and then we're going to just do image and we're going to do resize canvas size and again i found the same to be uh, with the settings here with adding three inches. So if that's 16, we're going to add change that to uh, 19. And we're going to change 25 to 28. Now it's not exact science when you do this stuff, folks. This stuff, you can play around with this. Maybe you want a thinner border. Let's see what it will look like with a thinner border. Let's say we go with, um, instead of 28, we're going to go with 26. And maybe instead of 19, we'll go with 18. So you can play around with these. These aren't exact measurements. Click OK. And you can see now, now you have that nice little white border, a uh, little bit thicker on the top and thinner on the sides. Again, 
just a very, very nice way to spruce up your pictures and to show those off a little bit. Hey, you have Photoshop Elements, you might as well use it and make your pictures even more interesting than what they already are with your great photography shooting. Folks, if you've enjoyed this video tutorial and you want to learn so much more, go to my website, jackstechcorner.com and look at the DVDs that are there for sale. Um, a lot of those were written. The latest one in there happens to be Photoshop Elements 10, but all of those edits and, and all of those DVD series are going to work just fine for you in Photoshop Elements 11. I guarantee it because as the Elements gets better, there's more tools added, but everything in there is going to work because those tools still exist. So if you uh, want to go in there and, and look around, you might want to pick up one of those DVDs for you. If nothing else, thanks for at least watching this video tutorial. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please click the subscribe button here on YouTube and you will see more coming soon. Thanks again for watching this video tutorial on creating borders in Photoshop Elements 11. Until next time, keep your shutters clicking, keep your editors editing, and I'll see you back here very, very soon. Thanks and bye for now.